Hi everyone, my name is Fola Afolayon and I am a tarot reader, Reiki practitioner, an artist integrating art and healing. And I'm here to offer you a weekly reading, starting with the tarot and then transitioning into the oracle cards. So this week we're gonna use the Crow Tarot. And we're gonna take a few moments to take a few breaths and get grounded. And then we'll begin. Spirit guides, angels, ancestors of the highest love, truth, and compassion, please assist us with our weekly message. Thank you for your love, truth, and understanding. May we have clarity and protection during this reading. Ashe. Okay, <laughs> what is going on? All right, so the first card that we get is the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords. Now, traditionally, this card usually means theft or somebody deceiving you or lying. Um, this could be possible depending on what you're feeling intuitively and who you're dealing with. So if you're thinking somebody is lying to you or stealing something from you, either mentally, emotionally, or like literally, this could be the case. Or it could be your own self-sabotage mentally. You might be talking yourself out of doing something or accomplishing some sort of goal. And you might be mentally talking yourself out of that. So it's important to be aware of your thoughts during this time and what you're saying you cannot do. Like, oh, you can't do that. You can't accomplish that. What are you, what are you talking about? Let's just keep on doing those old habits. Let's not even try. Let's just sneak out of this and, you know, not even try something new out of my comfort zone. So that could be, it could be that, or it could be somebody deceiving you, trying to take something for, from you. And seven of swords usually means that they, this person will get caught. Or if you're the one doing the deceiving, you will get caught. So <laughs> be careful. But if you're dealing with this sense of mental uh, self-sabotage or um, not trying to accomplish your goals, uh, just, Get in touch with your fears and the things that might be holding you back and practices that will support you moving forward. And then we got a lot of sevens today. Ooh. And then we have the seven of wands. So seven, the number of spiritual elevation, you know, life path sevens are all about balancing intellect with um, intuition. So this week might call you to really use your intuition more and get out of your head and kind of have more of a balance this week. So seven of wands. So if you're dealing with somebody who is being deceptive, this is a call to like put your boundaries forward and let them know to get back. Get back, leave me alone, set my boundaries, take the action necessary that you need to protect yourself energetically and physically and let them know that you're not having it. <laughs> you're not having it. If this is you um, dealing with like self-sabotage, it's a call for you to stand up for what you want to fight for your goals, your vision, your dream, you know, with care and rest when needed, but to really stand up to the plate and be like, okay, I got this. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to accomplish my goals and I'm not going to let this self-sabotage or this self-defeat hold me back from accomplishing my goals, my vision, my dreams. It's like showing up for yourself. So those are the two interpretations that I'm getting right now. 
And then next to that, we have the Five of Swords. Ooh, lots of swords today. So this also might have you feeling defeated, whatever this is. If it's self-sabotage, you might already be feeling defeated before you've even tried anything or feeling like you've lost before even accomplishing anything in your head and with your words, you've said, I can't do it. So be very careful of your words and your thoughts. And if you need support in figuring out how to get out of that slump or feeling defeated, please do so. If you're dealing with somebody who's on that seven of swords energy, this five of swords is definitely letting you know that this is definitely a person that you cannot trust or uh, deal with. You might be dealing with somebody who's very manipulative emotionally with their words, with the way they talk, or even um, in some cases, this is comes up with narcissists. You'll see the five of swords. So this is just saying, be weary and be careful. So either way, find a way to protect your mental health this week and find a way to make sure that you're not um, going down a, a path that's going to bring um, this feeling of extreme pain or feeling of loss. So doing what you need to do to protect yourself and not calling defeat before you've even tried and protecting your yourself through boundaries as well if you're dealing with another person. Lots of mental this week, lots of mental. So it's going to require you to really like Put up your non-negotiables, your boundaries, and figure out uh, what you need to do to care for yourself this week. If you can find ways to get into your body, that would be great too, as these thoughts are linger. If you can find ways to do physical things, to tap into your body, to clear the mind, that'll be good. And also just, you know, paying attention to your actions and how that might be derailing you from your goals. All right. We're going to get into the Oracle. And now I have the soul's journey. I'm interested to see how this plays out with this reading for this week. Okay. Spirit guides, angels. Ancestors of the highest love, truth, and compassion. Please assist us with our oracle message for this week. Thank you for your love, truth, and understanding. May we have clarity and protection during this reading. Ashe. Yeah, um, if you think you're dealing with somebody that you can't trust, then your instinct is probably right from these cards, from what I'm getting from this. But if it's you, you know what you gotta do to help and support yourself and be kind and compassionate. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay, we'll just do, let's see, with the time. Okay, so the first card that we get is loneliness. I know that I am never alone. I know that I am never alone. Let's see what the message says for loneliness. I love that card. Okay, I know that I am never alone. This card has come to you because you must be reminded that there is a difference between being lonely and being alone. Feelings of loneliness originate from a sense of not appreciating the most important person in your life, you. If solitude seems like an affliction, you need to work on creating a healthy relationship with yourself. Only then will you attract others who will nurture your soul. If you don't develop a healthy relationship with yourself first, you will only draw unhealthy relationships to you. To create a healthy, positive relationship with yourself, you must begin to feel worthy of love. The pessimism of this physical dimension can affect your self-esteem if you don't have the strong conviction that you are valuable and meaningful. Don't view solitude as a weakness. It is merely your soul telling you that it is time to do some inner work and reevaluate your path before you start to shine. 
as you sit in the silence of your soul. You will realize that your spirit family, teachers, and guides are with you. You are never alone. Beautiful. So I think this might be coming up um, with the swords energies. If you're feeling like something's being taken from, from you or feeling defeated, remembering that you're not alone, that you have a, a team. If that's what you believe in, you have some people surrounding you, calling in your systems of support, and then also just spending some time in solitude, carving out some time to just really sit with yourself and see what is this self-sabotage really about or what is this relationship teaching me right now what what's going on with me and it's not blaming yourself for somebody treating you badly at all that's not what that is but it's just getting clear and having time to sit with yourself and being like what's going on you know with the summertime too i feel like there's a lot of avoidance because it's like everything is outward everyone's going out and it's like a very active season so I think it's even more important to take some time out in nature, to sit, to ground, even if it's five minutes a day to like just sit with yourself and ask your team for support, your spiritual team your, and your physical team for support. The next card that we get is health. I will honor the physical vessel that enshrines my soul. Health. Health, your body is your temple and you are responsible for its care. You have chosen to incarnate in this physical dimension to learn certain lessons. And if you don't maintain the physical vehicle that your soul has chosen, then you are sabotaging your own plan. <laughs> your health is a vital element for your soul's progress and you should never take it for granted. Be sensible about nourishment and exercise. You could be a sensitive being who is just being conscious of your surroundings because you can easily be drained by people, places, or things. Always make a ritual of protection and cleansing before you work with a client or just being in the back of your heart throughout the day to rejuvenate. This card may also signify a desire to assist other beings through physical or emotional healing work. You may be involved in the profession, uh, profession of medical fields, body work, psychiatry, and counseling. Or maybe you're just a good listener who needs, who possesses sage advice. If you or someone you know inherited a congenital disease, past life work might be some of some benefit. Sorry, that was kind of ooh, a cluster. <laughs> Uh, in a nutshell, this is, I think, inviting you to take care of your health. If you're self-sabotaging um, in that realm of health, like by not having a regimen or not eating well, then this is an invitation to really get clear on what you need to do to um, take care of yourself so you can um, live the best life in this body and thank your body. Um, I know that I was feeling a little off because I hadn't been eating well, so now I have to get back on track with that. Um, so that's kind of how that's resonating with me. It's just making sure you're eating well, hydrating, exercising in a way that's comfortable for your body and taking care of this vessel so that it can be clear and um, you can move through these challenges with a little bit more clarity and direction. Before we go, there's the last card. I might not have time to read the thing, the whole description, but it's abundance. I am a limitless being and I can manifest whatever I desire in this physical reality. So just being reminded that you are full of abundance and that you can create that in your life. Abundance, not only in finances, but in community, in the feeling of your body, being in your body, in your thoughts, in your ideas. So you want to make sure that you're tapping into this abundance and clearing out anything that does not serve that. If you're not feeling full, if your cup is not full, you want to make sure you take the steps necessary to clear that out um, whether that's getting rid of certain people in your life or getting rid of certain habits, thoughts. And that takes time. Consistency um, takes a lot of courage too, but consistency and compassion to meet those goals. So I hope this was helpful for you today. If this resonated with you, I invite you to leave a comment down below, whether you're on Instagram or YouTube. If you'd like to book a reading with me, I'm going to leave the link in the description below for YouTube and the link will be in my bio for Instagram. Take care and have a great week. Bye.